I did a video recently uh, outlining my, my noise reduction and sharpening workflow, which actually uses a plugin. And, and it occurred to me by, it occurred to me because a lot of people ask questions that depending on what program you're using, there's different ways to work with plugins, okay? There's differing plugin workflows. And I didn't really talk too much about that, so that's why I wanted to take some time in this video. So regardless of the plugin, whether you're using Lightroom Classic, there's a couple of different ways to go in and out of plugins, whether you're using Lightroom Desktop, uh, there's a couple of ways to go in and out of plugins. Same thing with Photoshop. So I thought I'd outline that in this video, shows some of the different workflows and what uh, really the major differences are going to be. Real quick, as we get started here, uh, if you do use Topaz for your sharpening or noise reduction like I do, um, they are running a big sale right now. So I put a link in there. It's a great time to, uh, to take advantage of it. I get a little extra commission from it. If you go through my link, it doesn't cost you a penny. Uh, and I will send you a PDF shortcut guide. Again, you can find out more about that in the link in the description. Let's go ahead and jump in. We'll start off inside of Lightroom Classic. If you're a Lightroom or Photoshop user, uh, you can scroll forward in the video to get to those. Uh, it's actually easier because we don't have a catalog to worry about getting photos in and out of. But in Lightroom Classic, we have two ways to get to plugins. We can go down here to the photo menu, go down to edit in, and your plugins should be listed inside of this menu. It, this is all up to the plugin company. So if they're not there, you'd have to contact them. But this is where most of your plugins go, okay? Now, not a huge fan of this, this route for certain things. Going this route, you're not gonna be working on the raw photo. It's very similar like as if you're going into Photoshop, okay? It's gonna create a copy of your raw file based on your Lightroom classic preferences. You'd go into your preferences to see what that, that edit copy is. If you, in fact, if you go into a plugin, Photoshop, it does it automatically. If you go into a plugin, it's gonna pop open a window saying, what type of a file do you want here? And you'll see there's no raw option. There's no raw or DNG option. It's TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. Okay, so it's gotta create that copy and it will automatically do it the moment I click edit. That's thing number one that I don't like because if you abandon the plugin and you decide you don't wanna do whatever you're gonna do in there, you're left with that orphan big copy of a photo that you gotta to remember to go back and delete, okay? But um, this route is great if you're just doing a special effect, okay? If you've got a plugin that's a, that's a colorized, stylized special effect, totally fine. You don't need to go into the plugin on the raw file. The, both ways will create a copy, but this other way, is what you do, what you'd go to if you were using a plugin for, I would call it image quality, okay? So something for noise reduction or sharpening, you're generally, most plugins are gonna recommend you do that through file, plugin extras, and then go down there to the plugin because it will take the raw photo in there. It'll still make a copy. I'll go jump into photo, Topaz Photo AI because that's where I do a lot of my noise reduction and sharpening. Uh, especially uh, since I shoot a lot more landscapes handheld these days. I'm tired of carrying around the gear, but uh, I'll add a sharpened step to this as well. So what this is doing is it's working on, it's working on a copy of the file, but it's a raw version. So what it's gonna end up saving us is a, is a DNG. So that'll be as close to raw as we can get in the Adobe world. But you can see it does a nice job on sharpening. And this is just sharpening I don't personally feel I can get inside of Adobe. I'll scroll to the back here, you'll get a little idea of it. So this is working on the raw file. You're gonna get the best noise reduction typically for that plugin. All right, you're gonna get the best noise reduction and you're gonna get the best sharpening. And if you do need to upscale, you'll, you'll, you'll typically get the best upscaling for that as well by going in there with the raw file first, okay? Now, again, that's typically just image quality stuff. If you're looking for special effects, I have no problem going the other route because they're both gonna create a copy. As you'll see here, I'll hit export to Lightroom. And what it's doing here is it's exporting a DNG which is an essentially a raw file here. So that's gonna bring us back over into Lightroom Classic. It's making a copy of the photo, you can see it's exporting. And once we get back into Classic, now we'll have our original raw file, okay? But we'll also have the DNG copy that we just worked with that's actually doing the sharpening in there. If you did any editing to the photo before you went in, you wouldn't have seen that in Topaz, but it'll hold that editing when it comes back. So you can see the photo looks a little bit different because I did do some uh, basic lighting changes here. So it'll hold that editing when it comes back on the copy of the photo, 
All right, so that's my preference for Lightroom Classic. Again, stylization type of things, fine with the photo edit in menu, image quality things, you're probably gonna wanna go with the file plugin extras way, that way you get access to the raw information. Uh, really quick, so if you are a Topaz user or you wanna be a Topaz user, I actually did a video recently and you, you can go to my website blog and just look at the video that's before this one or wherever you're watching this video, it's the one right before this one. Uh, I did a video on how I've been using it for uh, my noise reduction and sharpening on the photos that need a little extra TLC. Not all photos need it and I can get a lot done that I usually need to in Adobe, but when I need that extra, I am using Topaz. I say that because it's a big sell time for them. So if you're going to purchase or renew and then it'll tack on to your existing license, be a good time to do it because you do save a lot of money. And if you do, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd use my link below. I can't offer you a coupon code because they don't do coupon codes. It won't cost you a penny, but I can offer you a PDF shortcut guide. So if you do use uh, the link there, there's a, a page I'll make sure you put in there and uh, you can go in and enter your information, download that PDF shortcut guide. So uh, again, good time with the big sale to, uh, to grab your copy of Topaz or renew your license if that's what you need to do. And uh, as a thank you for using my link, cause I do get a small commission, um, you can download that PDF guide. Let's go back and take a look at what we do now if we're using Lightroom Desktop or Photoshop. Now let's take a look at Lightroom Desktop and Photoshop. So these are these are actually pretty simple. All right, so in Lightroom Desktop, I, I typically use the, the local mode, uh, but this will also work in the cloud mode as well. So when you open up your, your photo to edit in Lightroom Desktop, remember, you're just simply looking at a folder. You're just browsing a folder. That's all it is. It's, it's like bridge. It's like photo mechanic. It's like your finder window. It's like your explorer window. There, there is no importing of photos here. It's just a browser. Okay. So we're looking at photos in a folder. If you get to a photo and you decide that this is a photo that you want to use a plugin on, you do have the option like we had in classic. And I would only use this option if it were again, a stylistic type of an adjustment to go to the file menu, go down here to edit in. And then you'll see a browse option there. So you would navigate to the plugin you want to use. Once you do that once, it'll actually be sticky. You'll see it get listed up here. So you can go that route. Same thing with Lightroom Classic. It's gonna create a copy for you, okay? So it's gonna create a copy of that file for you. And that copy of the file is going not, it's not going to be a raw file. So it's gonna generally be a TIFF file there. So you can go that route. It walks you through the whole workflow. I'm not gonna to, to go through the whole thing, but uh, it just kind of navigates you and follows there's directions on what to do. Now, if you're doing an image quality adjustment, doing some type of noise reduction, sharpening, upscaling, as I said before, all those, those plugins generally recommend you work on the raw file first. So what you would do is just right click, show in Finder. It's gonna show me my file here. And then I'll just right click and choose open with, and I'll go into Photo AI, okay? And that's it. You're essentially just taking the original file and you're opening it <clears throat> into whatever plugin that you wanna use. I'll go in here and I'll add that sharpen adjustment to it as well. So it'll do a nice job on this photo. Let's uh, make sure we're sharpening all. Crank it up a little bit there. And again, it just, it, it does it does a job for noise reduction and sharpening, especially on the raw file that I'm, I'm just simply not able to, uh, to, to get in the Adobe world there. Okay, so now from there, all you do is go down here to export image. It's gonna give you all the information here. You don't have to change the name, save it to. The one thing you'll wanna do is save it to the original folder, okay? That's where you had Lightroom looking. So you wanted to save this there, preserve file format, sure, hit save. What's gonna happen is same thing as we did before. It's going to save that file as a DNG, if it came in there as raw, it's gonna save that file as a DNG into that same folder. Okay, and that's the important part here because remember, when you're using Lightroom, I said before, all you're doing is browsing a folder. That's it, okay? There's no import, there's no process where there's a catalog and the photo has to get in there the right way or you won't see it and all these different things. You're just browsing a folder. So the moment I save another photo into that folder, like it just happened here, that will show in the folder, okay? So now this is the photo that I could go on to continue in my editing process. 
If you're using Photoshop, the same thing would go. Whatever program you're using to look at your photos before Photoshop, you would go in there, find the photo, click on it, and, and open it up into Topaz as a standalone. That's that's all it is. Is we're essentially we're essentially using Topaz or whatever plugin it is that you're using as a standalone app. Okay. If you happen to be in the main Photoshop interface, then you've got an option of going up here to the filter menu, going down to Topaz or whatever plugins you have installed and going into the app that way. By the way, Denoise and Sharpen are the older versions. They are discontinued for the most part. You can't even buy them anymore. Photo AI is the one that you'd want to get there. So, but now you can go in here as a plugin. So I could, you know, command or control J, make a copy of a layer, go down to whatever plugins that you have installed here. That'll take into the plugin and out. Just remember that's again, what I would suggest more stylistic in changes because you're not going to get access to the raw file. Some plugins even allow you to go to file automate and they may or may not appear down here. So again, you'll want to check your specific plugin maker for how they recommend that you go in there to the plugin from Photoshop. But there are two different ways that you can get in there for when it comes to Topaz, they're pretty much the same, but other plugins might be a little bit different. As I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to pick up Topaz or renew your license, good time to do it. And uh, if you use my link, I do get a small affiliate commission. I can't give you a coupon because I don't have them, but as a thank you, I will offer a free PDF uh, shortcut guide for Topaz Photo AI. So all the information's on that page. It's actually like a little mini uh, Topaz Photo AI Learning Center. So it's got some frequently asked questions as well as another video. So uh, thank you for doing that. Next thing too, since you're watching this, maybe you're interested, uh, I've got another video right here that's got my sharpening and noise reduction workflow for the photos that need a little bit of extra TLC. So if you're looking for another video to go to next, that's a great one to check, to check out.